Yo, Elliot, hope you're doing well. I emailed you last week about religion and your answer was a great motivation for me and I decided to convert to Islam. Okay. Uh, I have a question regarding my girlfriend. She's wife material. She will likely follow my lead and convert too. But dating in Islam is not permitted, nor should it be. In fact, even touching her is not permitted because she's technically not part of my family. I like that about Islam. <laughs> I'd be happy to marry her after I graduate college in May. Do you have any advice in terms of navigating this situation? Should I wait to convert until closer to marriage as I don't want to be half in when I convert? I think going to completely no physical contact with her wouldn't be the wisest move though, but a slower transition may be necessary. I appreciate you can't speak from an Islamic perspective, but any advice would be helpful. Okay, let me back up for a moment. <laughs> I get it, the not touching, and I was, you know, I was being a little facetious when I said I like that. But I don't know. I, I, I get it, right? And part of the reason why I get it is because we've become so sensual in our society that, like, we're expected to hug every woman we meet. Like, that's the dumbest thing. I hate that. I don't do that anymore, right? When I meet my friend's wife, right? We go out, we're going to have dinner. I'm supposed to hug your wife? Why am I supposed to hug your wife? I don't want to hug your wife. I shake hands with your wife just like I shake hands with you. But I don't want to hug any woman that I'm not going to do it with, <laughs> right? We ain't doing it. I'm not pressing my body up against you, right? And you're not my wife, so I'm not going to do it with you. So why am I pressing my body up against you? Just to clarify when I said I get that, I like that. But the whole don't even touch, it's a bit extreme, right? Uh, uh, you know, I mean, that's what you are into, you know? I don't want to I don't tell you no, but I don't like that. I'm, that's, a little, that's a little extreme for me. But I do like the idea that dating is not permitted and that you shouldn't fornicate, right? Like that's, I'll, I'll draw that boundary. I'll say dating is dumb. Dating is dumb because dating is setting you up for divorce. That's what dating is. Dating is hopping from partner to partner to try each other out, right? And when you get in the habit of trying people out, you know that, well, I have an out. And if I have an out and I get it used to this practice of trying people out, when it's time to actually be with somebody, that, that habit of being able to get out doesn't go away. Oh, it does not go away. If you train yourself that way, that's the way you're going to go into your marriage. That's the way you're going to go into relationships. That's why marriages don't work. Marriages don't work because dating culture, fornication. This is why, right? And so I don't put this out there as a Catholic. I put this out there as a practical man, right? I see now the wisdom in these religious dictates. I couldn't see them before. I was too young, I was too caught up, and I wanted to do what I wanted to do. So I'm older now, and usually people, as you get older, like you figure these things out and you start to realize, right? So I don't expect you guys to listen to everything I say, but at some point you can be like, oh, 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 okay, now I get it, right? Like I do, so I have to just say, now I get it. That, the reason why marriage and family is suffering to such a tremendous degree, there's so many reasons why, but when it comes to us as men and our part in it, it's because we've given way to fornication. We've given, a, we've given way to the unleashed diabolical disorientation of the sexual revolution. That's the night, since the 1960s, that has what's destroyed marriage and family and if you want to destroy a society you destroy the cellular block of the family our country is completely destroyed our culture is completely destroyed because of the marxist invasion it's a it's a psychosocial invasion it's a cultural war and that war began with the social revolution mark my words i if you want to watch a documentary i just saw it on youtube there's two parts of it, and I think they're trying to suppress it because I think there's a third part. You can't even find it. I got to do more research, but it's called Wolf, The Wolf in Sheep's Clothing, and you just put in the letters E-W-T-N, E-W-T-N, a sheep and wolf clothes, a wolf in sheep's clothing, 
and and uh, and you'll start to under- see where I'm coming from because I didn't know anybody who's ever done like a documentary on this stuff. Though there are lots of bad- videos from Census Fidelium where she ta- where he talks about uh, the errors of Russia. If you ever look up the errors of Russia, use and then put the keyword Fatima. Census Fidelium is a Census Fidelium channel. Start watching those videos. He goes through the history of the Marxist takeover of our culture, and it begins with feminism and feminism's ultimate goal. If you really, if you really dig deep and you understand what it's about, is a, is a plot to destroy marriage and the family, right? That documentary talks about uh, Simone Bolivar, right? I think that's her name, Simone Bolivar, who had a father who hated his, who hated women and treated her like a man, and she put forth many of the, the ideas that we have adopted that created the sexual revolution that ultimately has destroyed our families. Families are destroyed because we no longer have the traditions. Muslims, I don't know, it seems like in some of your countries and some of, some of your people, you guys hold on to, to these traditions. I don't know what the divorce rate is like in non-Westernized Muslim countries, but I'm sure it's a lot better than it is here, right? I might not agree with your theology, but the moral application of it, especially as it relates to family, works. You don't date, you court. And I'm, gonna, I'm doing it. I'm putting together a, a, a course. I'm, it's going to be for free. I'm going to put together a book, a PowerPoints and everything about how to court. And courting has everything to do with essentially a young man and the father of a girl he would like to marry. And the relationship is between those two people. I know that sounds crazy today because most fathers are derelict in their duty and degenerate douchebags. But the fact is that when fathers, when men become strong again, that's my whole mission here, fathers become strong again, which is the next step, then relationships will work again. And in fact, the feminists knew, this is all, I also created a webinar recently, right? I'm going to call it a master class. It's not really a webinar. I'm going to share with you guys. The feminists also knew that in order to destroy the American family, the key was to destroy the father. You had to remove the father's power dynamic in the relationship. It sounds absurd today to think that a father should have something to do with dating a girl. But traditionally, you don't, you're not going to hang out with my, and this is, listen, I don't know how it's all going to unfold, but I know what my intention is. No boy going to be hanging out with my daughter that I don't know about, right? And my daughters know this. If there is some boy that you think is your boyfriend, he's not until I meet him, right? And I, listen, I might sound, like people comment, they're like, oh, Elliot, you're too hard on your daughters. You meet my daughters, you'll find out I'm not hard on my daughters. My daughters are, they love their life. They have a great life. But they also have a father that protects them. Just because the culture teaches fathers that they need to stay out, let them go, right? They send them off to college and all kinds of crazy crap like that so that they can be ravaged by the world. Totally unprotected. Watch, the, there's a DVD I just recently bought. I think it's probably out of print, but it's called Return of the Daughters by the Botkins Daughters, B-O-T-K-I-N-S. Daughters, I mentioned one of their books the other day, which I think you guys should read. I got so much of this. This is the stuff that I'm into right now. I'm really like studying hard on but I see how the Muslims do it and they got it far better than the Christians got it, it because we've been subverted by Marxists. So, you know, we're, we're half atheists. We're, we're basically modernist, right? Modernist Christians, right? So there's no, there's no boundaries, right? We don't, we don't even know how to have boundaries because fathers forgot how to be fathers. Rant over. You want to know, should I, should I touch up on her now and wait to be Muslim later, right? Like Augustine, who says he wants to be he wants to be Christian, but he wants to wait till right before he dies, right? I think it was Augustine or um, Constantine, right? Lord save me, Lord make me make I I want to stop sinning, but not right now, right? I don't want I want to stop being a sinner, but not right now. Right? It's basically what you're saying. It's like I want to stop sinning, but not right now. You know what that sounds like? I want my cake and eat it too, right? I don't know if that makes sense, but that's an old saying, right? You want, you want to serve two masters, right? Jesus says this one. He says, you can't serve two masters, buddy. 
And right now, you're trying to serve two masters. You want to touch up, love up, kiss up, and be with your girl but and sin. And you want to be a holy, holy Islam bro. All right? So you, you kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place. And I would say to you, as I would say to any of my brothers here, offer it up to God. First of all, as we've already spoken about, even here today, you got to allow certain things to unfold by allowing things to be and having faith in God. That's number one. Number two, because you're a sinner, you can offer up your suffering as penance. This is Catholic theology. You can offer up your suffering as penance, which means she might leave you. If you choose not to touch her, that may be a problem with her. And not only are you going to be suffering because you're not touching her, she might have a problem with that and leave you. Suffer. Suffer. Just suffer, right? God loves when we suffer. This is Catholic theology, by the way. God loves when you suffer. God wants to see you suffer. God wants you to suffer. God gives suffering to those he loves the most. Look at how he allowed his son, his son to suffer as an example for us for what suffering is and the graces through which suffering bring to us, right? Offer it up. Offer it up. Offer it up for your sins. Penance, right? Mortifying your flesh. Suffer. So, in a way, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I would from a religious perspective. Do the right thing and suffer. But you don't want that. <laughs> too, many, too much rants going on. Let me go back to your question. She's wife material, and she'll, she'll likely follow my lead and convert too. Okay. But dating in Islam is not permitted. Not even supposed to touch her. Uh... I'm happy to marry her after I graduate college in May. That's another, that's another, that's BS in my opinion. If you're going to marry somebody, you marry them right away. I think this whole idea of year, two year, 10 years dating is a recipe for disaster as well. It's another part of the reason why relationships don't work. If anything I say sounds strange, just look at the fruits of what we've been doing hey, it seems like things aren't working. Elliot's saying something completely contrary to what everybody's doing. Maybe there's something going on over there. Maybe there is, because everything I describe and everything that I say is purely based on tradition. And traditionally, marriage always worked, right? Don't forget, don't forget. And I'm, I know it's not like a broken record. The way we're living is not a fruit of our natural law or the divine law. It's purely diabolical because we've been subverted by our enemies, right? Totally subverted by the enemy. Make no mistake, it's Satan, but he works through the infrastructure in this world. And if you need to give it a name, communism, right? That's the ultimate fruit that socialism, feminism, all the other isms is, is aiming towards, right? It's, 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 they use different terms to describe what they're ultimately after, and we're there. Do you have any advice on navigating the situation? Well, I would say marry her now. If you want to touch her, marry her now. Why not, right? You make it work. Should I wait until I, should I wait to convert until I, until closer to marriage as I don't want to be half in when I convert. Here's a question for you. Do you love God more or your girlfriend more? Right? I'm not judging. I'm just holding up a mirror showing you what you're showing me. I, could, I can't answer this for you. I'm a fallen man. I'm a sinful man. I make a lot of mistakes. I'm not sure what I would do. But the truth is, do you follow God or do you follow your girlfriend? And I can tell you, in the Bible, we got lots of stories about men that follow their girls. In fact, their very first book is all about a man who followed his girl, Adam and Eve. The reason why we live in a fallen state is because Adam listened to his girlfriend. 
He did what his girl wanted to do. The fathers of the early church say that he wanted to be with his wife. Adam didn't do the right thing. He didn't listen to his father, didn't follow God because he wanted to be with his wife. I want to touch her. I want to kiss her. I want to suck up on her. He fell. Every, and I put this in my master class. Every society that has fallen, and this is great. There's a book called um, The Fate of Nations by Glub. I think this is his name. I have, I've organized my books. I'm looking over there because I know where it is. Every society, before it collapses, falls into the hands of women. That's not an opinion. That's not a feeling. That's not a jab. That's a fact. Every man, I don't want to say every man, but in the Bible, when a man falls, it's usually at the hands of a woman. Look at Solomon. He fell because of all the women. So you do what you want to do, but basically you're, you're trying to worship two gods, and it's going to be the god Allah, or that's what you call him, or it's going to be your girlfriend. Should I wait to convert until closer to marriage? No. I think going to completely no physical contact with her tomorrow wouldn't be the wisest move, though, but a slow transition. Ruben Matos is giving you, is, uh, is telling you what to do here, too. He, Ruben, are you uh, Muslim? He's telling you. Marry her now, convert, and marry Allah comes first. Do it for God first. Yes, he says. That's the righteous way. I can't say that it was, so you're getting, you're getting advice from, me, from your Muslim brother here, Reuben. He's saying, yes, I am. He said, the worst sin in Islam is associated partners with Allah. She becomes the God uh, a form of shirk. I uh, don't see, I understand that. But uh, you, you, your Muslim brother here is giving you some advice and he's saying, you got to do the right thing, bro. You got to do the right thing. And when it comes to be, purely being a man, I mean, this, is not, this is beyond religion. Like I said before, a lot of the advice that I give you guys is not because, because I become a religious fanatic. It's because these are, these are logical things. These are things that I, that I see now objectively and I realize, wow, that's actually the right way. And it's the reason why things aren't working because we've gone so far astray. If you want to be a man that helps to repair the damage that has been done by three generations of debauchery, you get to start doing the right thing. This is something that I hold myself to as well, bro, and it's not easy. But every time I'm about to do something that I know, I ask myself this, if everybody were to do what I'm about to do, would we be getting closer to a world where men are becoming strong again or staying weak? I have to ask myself that because I want to be a part of the solution. And if I allow my effeminacy, I allow my weakness, I allow my addictions, I allow my softness to carry me, all I'm doing is further perpetuating the problem that I'm here to fix. I can't say I'm making men strong again if I keep choosing the weak way. It's not easy. A lot of times I want to choose the weak way. You, my friend, religion aside, if you're a man who wants to contribute to the strengthening of men, beginning with yourself, you got to do what's right. The whole I got I to gotta finish college is garbage. You say you have till May, but that's not even... Wait a second. February, March, April, May... May is right around the corner. I would start preparing to, I, if I were you, I would get right with God. If that means conversion for you, fine. Get right with God now. Don't wait. Don't wait to get right with God because you never know when you're going to blow your last breath. You never know. I'm, I'm reading a book right now. I'm listening to it on Audible. I say reading, but a lot of times I'm, I'm listening. And it's, it, I'll show it to you right now. It's called Preparation for Death. It's on Audible by St. Alphonsus Liguori. Whatever your religion, I, I invite you to listen to that. He reminds me when I listen to that, and I'm, I'm, I'm listening to it over and over again. This is one of those that I'll be listening to over and over again. You don't want to be 
in a state of mortal sin ever at all because in a moment's notice, you can be taken up out of this world. Allah could come for you right while you sinning, right? Right, right while you're in the, in, the, in the middle of sin. And here's the thing. It's not about your intention. They say the road to intention is, is paved. The road to hell is paved with good intention. If you fornicating with your girl because, you know, I have a few months left and, I got, you know, I'm going to graduate soon and you get hit by a bus, God's not going to be like, oh, I see that you meant to do the right thing. You thought about doing the right thing, but you didn't. Now, my God is a God of mercy. So there's that. But I don't want to rely on that. I much rather keep myself in full alignment, integrity. Not to say that I haven't been out of integrity. And not to say that I'll never be out of integrity again, but I hold myself to that standard, so I offer it to you. Are you living in integrity? And here's the thing, bro. I say suffer. It's, this month is over. March, April. Two, maybe three months. Let's say three months. 90 days. 90 days. Can you suffer for 90 days? Say to your wife, your potential wife, we are going to get right with God. And you say likely. No, you need to find this out. If you're thinking about making this your woman, you say this is wife material. You don't say likely. You got to find out for sure. And you got to do it. Wife, let's go give ourselves to the Lord. It's the right thing to do. Yes, husband. Yes, my righteous leader. Because a woman will... Women will follow a man, more likely follow a man that has good intentions, that has righteous intentions, that is good with his father, who has authority through the father, rather than the man who's wishy-washy. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm not ready yet. I want to touch you. I want to suck you and kiss you. Right? That's weak. And women can smell that. They smell it. That she might not say it is weak. She might not do anything about it, but you lose a little bit of merit with the opposite sex when you act weak like that. But when you say, wife, I've confirmed and I'm committed to God. And I'm going to do the right thing. Number one, there's a good, if she's the right kind of woman, there's a good chance she'll say, wow. Oh, she'll look up to you. Wow. I will follow you in that because she wants to do the right thing. If you're doing the right thing and she's a good woman, she'll want to do the right thing to please you. If she don't want to, if she's like, nah, I don't think so, I'm going to keep living a different way, right? And maybe she needs time to warm up. And that's fair, too. That's fair, too. She needs time to warm up. I'm assuming you've warmed her up to this idea already. You're not just going to pop up on her and say, hey, baby, you're going to start wearing this burqa, right? You're going you to start putting her in that. <laughs> Muslims be covering their women up. What you going to tell her? Hey, baby, put this on. And you'll have her all in black, just like Mary back there, but in black. Right? I'm traditional Catholic. I, tried to t I bought my wife a veil. I said, hey, you put this on at church. She looked at me like I was crazy. I was like, okay, I got to warm her up. <laughs> But you, you know, you got to be right first. And she got to see that you're serious, too. She got to see, is this man, is this man pulling in my chain? Is this man jerking himself around, too? Because a woman's checking you out how much integrity you have with yourself. Is this guy serious? She wants to know, is this guy serious or he just talking? Right? And right now, it's not like you're just talking. She want to see you doing the right thing. And then she'll be very happy to follow your lead. So you got to get right with her. And then you say simply, we have three months, 90 days. Think of it as a form of penance. Think of it as a form of making up for the sins of our past. Thinking it, think of it as an offering, a sacrifice to our Lord. This, this is a sacrifice we're making to our Lord. And it doesn't mean that every sacrifice brings graces, but God loves to, 
to give grace to those who sacrifice. God, because it's in the, we know this because it's in the Bible. It's the first thing he asks the father, the father of many nations, right? Abraham is your father as, as well, right? It's an Abrahamic faith, right? That's something that we, I guess we can all agree on. We're all children of Abraham. First thing he asks our father, Abraham, is, hey, you got you to make some sacrifices, buddy. Abraham, Abraham didn't think twice about sacrificing. Abraham was, <laughs> Abraham was willing to sacrifice in ways that I know I would not be willing to sacrifice. And the little sacrifice he's asking you here to keep your pee-pee in your pants for, for 90 days is not a big deal. So, he says, I think going to completely no physical contact with her tomorrow wouldn't be the wisest move. No, but you set the date for marrying her ASAP. That's my opinion. So that's what I think about that. Now you say a, a slower transition. I'm, I'm hoping this is something you've been talking to her about over time. And sometimes you got to take massive action if you're being called to. And I'll begin, I'll end with where I began. Pray to Allah. Right? Your God should tell you. Talk to your God. If your God is good, he's going to want to see you do good and he's going to guide you the right way. Right? I can't give you that answer. So that's it, my man. I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word King on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.